Well, hello there. It's Deej here on my journey to catch them all. And in today's video, I'm going to be opening up a smallish PSA return, 84 cards. I already got these listed, so I kind of got to hurry up and go through them. I created a Python program that I've made available on my website that takes PSA certs and creates eBay listings for you right away. Oh, you see my son's little hand creeping in there. He's here with me today. He wants to see what cards we get. But, um, yeah, I'll link that video up above here. Um, go ahead and check it out. It's going to be really useful for anybody that lists cards from PSA submissions. So, um, yeah, check it out. Say I listed about 50 of these cards. I'm keeping some, and some were duplicates. But about 50 cards in about 15 to 20 minutes. So, uh, I don't know if you can list that much on your own, but. This tool, I think, will be able to help you. All right, so let's dig in. So amidst editing, I decided I wanted to go into detail about how I consider a, a grading of a card good or bad. And by doing these calculations is how I decide that. So you got to take the market value, what you sell it for, subtract the raw value, because if you're not making any money, more money selling it graded than you were selling it raw you're really not doing anything good you're just wasting time money and resources so you have to subtract the raw raw value then you subtract the psa cost which for me in this order was 1545 and then you got fees your selling fees and i'll calculate those at 12 and a half percent in general be plus or minus that but that's just what i'm going to do for this so say for instance you sold a PSA 10 card for $30. Its raw value is $15. Its PSA cost is $15. And its fee would be close to $3, $4, something like that. And you'd be losing money. You wouldn't be gaining any money. Even though you sold it for $30, bucks, you might as well have sold it raw because you would have made three more dollars in the end selling it raw. So this is the calculation that I think is important to look at when going through graded cards, not just how much a card is valued at PSA 10, because that doesn't really give you the information that you need to know if it was worth it to grade or not. All right, here's, so let's see if I can open this without sharing any personal information. I got some of my buddy's cards in here, so I'm not sure what order they're going to be in, but let's just go from this side get the personal stuff out of there just take it out start with this box all right so to start i just got a okay so these are some of my cards master ball gyarados from 151 this is one of my biggest plays right now. I think these Master Balls are just home runs. I got a team. Basically, you can only get one per box. So they're basically a secret rare, except they're more rare because they have to be split amongst 150 Pokemon. So they're basically the most rare cards in an already expensive set. And you can get them for relatively cheap. I don't think I paid more than 35 for any of these. Okay, let's move this box here. So, Moltres. Ten. Can I do one card? Okay, go ahead and do one. See what we get. Got to put it under the camera, though. So, flip it. Ooh, Mewtwo Art Rare from 151. Also a ten. It's more of my cards. These are not in order, though. I know I got a bunch of these Mewtwo's in here, so we'll just kind of go through them. Another 10. Very nice. Another 10. So that's three. Oh, man. Another Master Ball, Snorlax, and a 9. I think these 9's I'll probably at least be able to make my money back. If not, just keep a few 9's for my collection for fun. Ooh, another Snorlax and a 10. I'm sure that's going to be a decent price. Haunter, a 10. Oh. Who doesn't love Tomokazu Kamiya for real, though? Plus, it's the Gengar line. I think that's going to be a home run. I think I got a couple of those graded. Hopefully, I got a couple of 10s. 
So we got a Persian and a 10. I'm not going to spend too much time. Oh, there's a Haunter and a 9. It's all right. Ooh, Ghastly and a 10. Another Master Ball. Another Ghastly and a 10. Very nice. Persian and a 9. That isn't great. Now looking at it again... The centering is a little off. I'm surprised I sent that. Maybe I thought the nine would be decent. In fact, I don't think I pre-graded these on the channel, but it'll be fun once I get some returns of cards that I pre-graded on the channel to kind of go back through and look at them and compare and contrast like what I did wrong when I was pre-grading. That one was a little off center too, that Haunter. RK9 and a nine. Nice. I pretty much blindly sent most of these just because the quality was good and they're the master balls and I thought I'd be able to do decent on the nines as well. All right, my son's gonna do the next couple. We got a 10 on the Machamp master ball. And then next, let's see what we got. An Articuno master ball on a 10. As you can see, I kind of just did a big spread of a lot of different master balls. If you have one of too many, it's just going to be hard to sell. And another Moltres in 10. I wanted a couple because it's always nice to have replenishable listings. But, um, again, I wanted to spread it out. Ooh, I missed the hype on these. I think this was going for like two or 300 at one point in time. I think it's closer to like 70, 80, maybe 100 right now. But those TR hollows from the Sun and Moon era. All right, we got a Pokemon Go Mewtwo. Everybody's getting those boxes off Amazon for like 45 bucks and just trying to recoup so those costs with some of the hits. Oh yeah, Radiant Eevee and a PSA 10. All right, and this is a card that my son pulled himself from a Happy Meal. I thought it was perfect. I want to look at this card actually because just... You can wait for the next one. Because I thought this was for sure a 10. Like, the back looks good. I feel like... If you get some of these cards, like, the backs are, like, a different kind of cardboard. Like, it's almost like they made them with different cardboard. And I think that they're getting punished for that. Because that... I don't see why that shouldn't be a 10. At, at looking at the rest of the McDonald's cards. But that's annoying. Oh, man. I thought this one had a chance as a 10. This was a card that I pulled out of a first edition rocket box I opened about 10 years ago. Man, I wouldn't have sent these if I thought they were getting eights. I thought they were gonna get tens. So we got a first edition jungle Tauros and an eight. The back must have been really clean for me to send this. It's pretty clean. Get maybe a little off center. Like, I guess it's a 9, but... Man, I thought that was going to get a 10. Probably the centering. Oh, well. Gotta try. A 9 is definitely a loss. So we got a Trainer Rare me Remix about Welder. I think that's going for about 50, 60. Ooh, Fossil Haunter. If I buy a lot of collections, and you get, like, some near mint, definitely not gem mint, hollows, and they sell for so much better... If you just get them graded, like in a 7 or an 8. Like if you sell them raw, you'll get like 5, 10 bucks. But if you sell them graded, you'll get 30, 40 and make it like 10, 15 dollars back. So I know this is a low pop card. Kind of a weird one to send. But when you have a gem mint copy of almost any of the older cards, you don't want to take a chance on it. Plus any of the E-Series cards are awesome. Alright, I'm happy about that one. All right, what's next here? We got another one of the Mewtwo's and a nine. I'm almost under the assumption, like if you send like 10, almost gem mint perfect copies of one card, they're gonna give you one nine. I don't know. That's probably just conspiracy theorist in me, but. Another 10. Another 10. Another 10. Ooh. 
I actually bought these off TCG Player, oddly. I was looking for my Tyranitar for my binder, the English one, and somebody was selling these in a bulk form, and they are relatively good price, so I took a chance. 10, another Gyarados 10, very nice. Oh, I might be able to keep one of those. Great. All right, clearing the desk, moving on to the next box. This one feels full. All right, my son's going to do the next stack. So we got a reverse Paldea Pikachu. The 10, luckily, got an Eternatus VMAX. Any of these modern Scarlet and Vi Ooh, Radiant Charizard. My son's favorite Pokemon is Charizard. He's going to like want that one. Any of these modern cards, Scarlet and Violet, that you can find in your collection in 10, they are really hard to come by. The quality has just not been great. So if you can get this, you're going to get a premium on it for sure. Crown Zenith hits, of course. Yuka Mori. Oh, sorry about that. People love her clay art. Even in a 9, it's probably going to sell, although I really didn't think it was going to get a 9 or I wouldn't have sent it. Reverse Yukimori Clefairy. Ooh, Charizard EX from Obsidian Flame. I wonder if that still has any value. Oh, a 9. That Tyranitar. <laughs> Cosmo Hollow. Any of these promo cards in the 10s, they're always hard to grade. So I usually try and pick out some good copies. 7 on that? Wow. I would not have sent that if I thought it was going to get a 7. I'm another artist that people really like. It's Asako Ito. He does like the knitted cards. They're really cool. And they usually sell pretty good too. Umbreon, popular Pokemon. Not necessarily a popular artist, but... Dang, I got a 9 on the reverse. Wouldn't have sent that, but hopefully it'll still sell. Another Tomokazu card in a 10. I'm a huge Avatar The Last Airbender fan, so I had to buy a case of the Weiss Schwartz Avatar set, and I opened a few boxes, and the cards were just amazing. Like, I couldn't be the only one that was going to appreciate these, so I ended up grading a couple. This was a triple rare, Colors of Fire Hollow. Then I got a Ty Lee Avatar rare, and Ty Lee's popular, obviously, waifu style. But, man, these cards are really cool. Those booster boxes are dirt cheap. Like, if I make any money on these, I'll probably just open a few more and see how popular the cards are. I grade a lot of common non hollows that a lot of people don't grade with popular artists. Like, this is a Tomokazu Komiya card. Got a 9, unfortunately. I really try and be really strict and only send 10s, but... I'm not the kind of person that just wants to turn and burn through a bunch of cards. Like, I want... I'm doing a service for people that collect this kind of stuff, but don't have the time or expertise to grade, but they want a perfect copy of all of Tomokazu's artworks. Um, or somebody like might really like Mellow and Lana or Cosmic Eclipse, but they don't have time to search through a bunch of bulk that people say is near mint, and good luck finding mint bulk. Even straight out of the packs, finding tens is difficult. And that's how I know that this is something that's valuable to people out there. So again, you'll see lots of that, a theme here of me doing this. Because these will sit on my shelf for some period of time waiting for that collector that wants them. So the Pikachu, obviously, and then this is Yuka Mori. She does all the clay art. She's very popular. These, these will probably sell pretty quick. But, you know, you're turning a 10, 20 cent card into... 30 40 bucks and that's how you can make pack opening free in my eyes you really gotta find the riches in the niches another tomokazu kamiya card these are more of the tyran tars i got off a of tcg player just all tens luckily very nice so i got this raichu in the tcg from that same order from tcg player in that same order with those tyran tars they were all tens it's the beauty of Japanese cards, but also why this card's probably only worth like 25 bucks. More tens in the Mewtwo. Gotta love that. Need to get some of these sold though, because I'm sure the price is just gonna keep going down because of people like me. Lots of tens. Yukimori Larvesta and a nine. Ah, these nines. I'm gonna have to 
look into those and see why I got nines and why I missed. So Mokaiza or Raquinid from Cosmic Eclipse, a Lechonk, 10. I think that's a pop one. And there's a Larvesta 10. And thanks for joining me. Um, go ahead and subscribe. I've got a lot more of these coming. I'm going to be probably putting out more tools to help you in your store make more money and do things faster, give you more time back to do the things you like. Again, thanks for joining me today. It's Deej here on my journey to catch them all.